Now, coming to the mechanism of bronchospasm in the perioperative period. This airway is innervated by a lot of sensory afferent nerves which goes to nucleus tractus solitarius. Now, you have to interrupt this tract to prevent the bronchoconstriction. How we can do it? For example, infiltration of local which prevents the nerve conduction or you give a regional blocks around the airway can prevent this reflex bronchoconstriction. The other important thing which can cause bronchospasm is parasympathetic. Here, the parasympathetic preganglion nephril travels via vagus nerve to release acetylcholine to the muscarinic receptor. So, you have to give something to counter this parasympathetic stimulation. What we can give? Here, you give anticholinergic mainly to overcome this reflex on. Not only that, you have volatile agents and beta 2 agonists also breaks this parasympathetic heart. Apart from that, you will have central mechanism for causing bronchospasm. By anesthetizing the patient deeply, we can prevent this centrally induced bronchoconstriction. Another important thing is both propofol and inhalation agent, apart from acting centrally, they prevent bronchoconstriction by acting directly on the aminobutyric acid A channels as well as by modulating the calcium response to contractile protein. Apart from this non adrenogenic and non cholinergic, you have tachykinins, VIP, vasoactive intestinal peptide, and CGRP, calcitonin gene related peptide, which helps this reflex arc for causing bronchoconstriction. So, if you have counters to this neurotransmitters, we can reduce the bronchoconstriction. One such drug is Profofol, which preferentially acts on tachykinin induced airway constriction. By countering the tachykinin, it causes bronchodilatation. Now, what happens when there is bronchospasm? This is a hair which moves inside the bronchi into the alveoli and then it comes down. When you have bronchospasm, this bands are the smooth muscles which constricts the bronchus. So, there is a constriction in the bronchus and the air cannot freely come out or go in. And there is distal dilatation due to this smooth muscle construction. Here you can see the airway being dilated. This is called the hyperinflated the lung and your muscle is constricted. Not only that, your airways will be filled with mucus because there is not much movement and airway swells due to hyperinflation.